Well, ladies and gentlemen, chairman, graduates, honorary graduates, and associate, welcome to Imperial College London's Commemoration Day. This is a day which celebrates high achievement, and today we pay tribute to the attainments of a record number of undergraduate students, 2,103 today, and also we have 5,245 guests here, the largest ceremony we've ever had. So I'd like to begin by offering my warmest congratulations to those about to receive their degrees. I'd also want to thank the family members, partners, and friends present. You have supported and nurtured the academic achievement that we celebrate today. And it's a pleasure to welcome our guests, each of whom has made very significant contributions to society. This morning, we will award honorary degrees to Anne Leverjean, Chief Executive of the leading nuclear energy company, Arriva, and to philanthropist Lord Wolfson, who established the Wolfson Foundation. We will also recognize the service of Anne Barrett, the college archivist and corporate records manager, by conferring upon her the associateship of Imperial College. Now, this is the second commemoration day that Imperial has celebrated as an independent university. Our Royal Charter was bestowed in July last year, the year of our centenary, by Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. Those of you who have chosen today to receive an Imperial degree rather than a University of London one are the first undergraduates to do so. Of course, you all took the same exams to be here today, and we are proud of you as Imperial College graduates, whatever the color of the trim of your gown. I have two main themes in my address to you today. First, I want to call attention to the ever-increasing role of science, technology, medicine, and business studies in addressing the major issues facing the world today. These include global warming, food and water supply, energy, and of course, most recently, the worldwide financial trouble. Second, I want to examine the issues facing higher education and research in the UK, and how Imperial is hoping to respond to the challenges ahead. It hardly needs saying, but the demand for highly trained scientists, engineers, physicians, and business graduates and postgraduates has never been greater. Graduates trained in methods of quantitative assessment and evidence-based analysis are valued in all walks of life. The diversity of careers that our new graduates enter into reflects this very broad demand. Imperial graduates attract amongst the highest graduate starting salaries in the United Kingdom, and in a recent international survey, employer satisfaction with our graduates ranked equal with Harvard, Yale, Cambridge, and Oxford. We know that our degrees provide a good preparation for the careers you are about to or have already entered. Now, as well as bringing a scientific engineering or medical training to a broad range of professions, some of you here today will play a part in the development of what can only be described as the world's most urgent need. And this is to develop carbon-free energy sources. Political agreements aimed at reducing carbon emissions, such as the Kyoto Accord, are clearly important. Regulation enmeshed with tax incentives have an important role to play in addressing global warming and the rising carbon dioxide levels. But many believe, and I'm certainly one of them, that the most urgent and pressing need is for intensive research worldwide to develop alternative sources of energy. If you look at the present, today the greatest fraction of world's total spend on research and development is in defense, the automobile industry, and medicine. At the same time, research that will make cheap carbon capture a reality 
or that will provide carbon-free energy sources such as wind, waves, solar, and nuclear is not adequately supported. Our current spend in these areas is rising, but it's a very small fraction of funding compared with that for the defense and biomedical fields. Just to put some facts um, on that point, if we take the United States, which has the largest R&D spend worldwide, Last year, the federal R&D spend was actually 59.6% on defense, 21.3% in health, and 1.4% in energy. Now, I'm not saying that we should decrease research activity in biomedicine, which aims, of course, to improve human health. In fact, the pace of discovery is growing so rapidly in the new drug and vaccine domains that we actually need to spend more to translate these discoveries into treatment. And a key priority is to decrease health inequalities throughout the world, and many new exciting interventions are emerging, and some of low cost. And we must bring these medical discoveries to the poor nations of the world, and Imperial will play its role in that via our newly established Institute for Global Health. A key question, a rising question, is whether we can afford all of the new options for treatment or invention, even in our wealthy societies. This has been so painfully apparent in the cancer therapy area recently in deliberations of NICE, the Drug Approval Authority for the UK's National Health Service. But turning back to energy, the volume of research and development money spent on novel energy technologies and carbon capture needs to change very quickly, since time is so short to address these problems. As you all know, atmospheric carbon dioxide is rising steadily and in some recent years rapidly. Ice shelves are collapsing and retreating. Species are being wiped out. And new scientific discoveries, of course, take time to emerge in the market. And I feel very strongly that we have to value R&D on the health of our planet as much as we value research towards improving individual health. And in fact, I'm certain that our individual health will evermore depend very closely on our planet's health in the coming decades. Now, universities have an important role to play here. In the past decades, the world has looked to university researchers for most of the major scientific, engineering, and medical discoveries. The world is now desperately looking for solutions, affordable solutions, to the energy problem. And once again, I'm confident that universities will play a critical role. Industry, of course, plays a very, very central role in supporting basic research in the universities and elsewhere, and internally, they are the powerhouse that develops ideas to product development and into market. Imperial College has a very broad range of activity at present in the novel energy R&D fields. And today, we will expand this greatly in the coming uh, years, few years. We will make an effort to raise our game very significantly in this domain. And there are many exciting opportunities here to develop innovative and efficiency low or zero carbon energy generating technologies, as well as new carbon capture and storage methods. And there's enormous appetite in the universities worldwide to turn these discoveries and to find new discoveries that will benefit the world. Imperial College has a very thriving entrepreneurial culture. We have an extremely strong record on spinning out companies we have a specialized technology transfer company in South Kensington and an incubator for early stage companies. And last year, we began more companies than Oxford and Cambridge combined. 